Hello, welcome to this new video series titled Overcoming Repeated Sin. It's all about me sharing with you key principles that are going to help you walk away from every negative habit, negative addiction, negative sin that you keep finding yourself falling back into them time and over again. If you're familiar with this is the last time I'm doing this thing and then yet you're back to it then you want to watch this series till the end. Personally, I've had to apply these principles in my own life to actually walk from deliverance into freedom. You see, deliverance is a part where you're actually brought out of the problem, but then it takes freedom for the problem to be brought out of you. And that is why you find that in this series, in the upcoming videos, we're going to see different types of repeated sin. There is a case where it occurs daily, where you say in the morning, this is the last time I'm not doing this again, and then by evening you're back to eat, or the next day, and then the day after that, and you find that this thing is kind of a thorn in your flesh. Then there is the other type that you can actually go for a week, and it looks like you're completely fine, and then suddenly you're back to the same problem. But there's also another type that looks like months. You can even go for several weeks, even a month, and you think maybe you've overcome this thing, you're not going back to eat. Then suddenly, on a certain day, when the recipe for disaster comes together in full, you find yourself plunging back down to the pit that you really don't want to find yourself again. So if you're familiar with these, and then there are things that you're struggling with, things that you really never have the courage to tell anyone, things that you know, if maybe people found out about you, it's not going to be very pleasant. Or there's some things that people know, but you're still struggling and finding a way to get out of it, then you want to watch this video soon. This is going to be a five-part series, and in this first part, I'm just giving you an introduction and a rundown of the video series and what you should expect. And then, In the second video, I'm going to tell you why this repeated sin is such a powerful weapon. And trust me, many of the things you're going to be hearing here, you probably haven't heard them like this before. Because it's important that you understand how destructive and why the enemy chooses this weapon to use against believers today. And in the third video, we are going to explore how people actually find themselves in those places that are so unpleasant and so that we can better understand how to walk out of it. And in the fourth video, I'm actually going to give you practical, applicable, straightaway steps to help you walk out of it. And in the fifth video, we're going to be looking at a very core principle that is going to help you stay out of it because it's easy to stop, but it's more important to be consistent when you have gotten out else you'll find yourself going back and in and back and forth and back and forth over and over again so take a look at this list if you're familiar with any of the things of this list or what you're concerned about is not on this list then you want to watch this series to the end and one thing you're going to notice that in this series i'm going to avoid calling the repeated scenes by their names other terms that I use to describe repeated sins are addictions or bad habits or struggles and in this video series I'm going to try to avoid calling any of them by name. So you're just going to see this list and there's an important reason for that which we're going to see in one of our videos and that is triggers because many of those things because you have become tied to them or like chain to them their names have become somewhat of a trigger and that's why when you sit maybe in church and then you hear the preacher calls a name you suddenly grabs your attention because it has become a trigger and so one way to actually set yourself free is also to avoid triggers and we're going to be seeing that in the fourth video so stop being hard on yourself in this video series i'm going to help you understand god's unconditional love so Put aside the resolutions, put aside the never again, put aside this is the last time and put aside all those things because most of the times they are what will cost you to come back again after a while. So I want you to bear with me and be patient to watch all the videos in this series. It's not a magic formula that promises you instant freedom. There is no such thing as instant freedom. Freedom, you need to understand the principles, you need to apply them. And then you need to walk in them consistently. And that's how you can actually access true freedom. So relax. I would like to leave you with this scripture. 1 Peter 5 verse 8 to 9 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Verse 9, Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. The focus is on that verse 9, 
knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Remember at least, remember whatsoever you're going through, you'll be amazed at the number of people out there who are going through the same stuff. So don't condemn yourself, don't give up on yourself, hang in there and let's go through this series to see how we can all reach true freedom. So in this video we're looking at why is repeated sin such a powerful weapon used by the enemy. To understand this, I must tell you the biggest lie. Do you know what is the biggest lie? The biggest lie is the idea from the enemy that this is just about you. This doesn't affect anyone else. There are no major damages and oh, God will forgive you when you ask for forgiveness and everything is going to be fine again. Well, God may forgive you and you may not necessarily uh, go to hell or miss heaven per se, but that's not the enemy's focus. You see, the point of repeated sin is because the enemy is after one thing. And guess what that one thing is? It's your character. You see, character is what has distinguished great men on the earth from mediocre men. Any great achievement, any great accomplishment with God has been with men of character. But the interesting thing is that character is built over time. Take for example, if you have developed a solid character in the ministry of healing, it means that you have proven consistency in healing and praying for the sick over the years. So perhaps you started praying for headache and then stomach pain and then you continued in that consistency to the point that you can pray for complicated diseases and God heals these people. So every time you pray for someone and they get their healing, your faith grows, your character is built. It's like adding a new block or a new pillar on your character. So what repeated sin does is every time you fall, every time you make that mistake, every time the enemy cages you, a block from your character falls down. Maybe the whole thing, maybe some pillars crumble and so next time you have to go back again to rebuilding your character. So think about that. You are kept on the same spot. So yeah, that's right. The enemy is not after trying to destroy you per se because you are indestructible in Christ. But if he can keep you on the same spot, if he can limit your potential, if he can limit your ability to exercise and become all what you were born and created to be, all what Christ has redeemed you to be, then you are just as, in quotes, please forgive me, useless, as though you were never saved. So what is the enemy after? He's after your character. You see, his objective is to limit your potential limit your potential to hear God because every time you go and you mess up and then you come back even though God forgives you your relationship has been set apart a little because of that sin remember you, you know in scripture that righteousness holiness and sin have nothing in common so you can't be doing back and forth back and forth it's like you do two steps forward and then you do three steps or two steps backward so you're kind of on the same spot so he's limiting your potential to hear God he's out to limit your potential to see dreams and visions and revelations for your life per time the enemy is out to limit your potential on the prayer altar think about it think about it every time you're caught in a repeated sin what's your prayer point all about it's all about getting forgiven, it's all about getting cleansed, it's all about getting reaccepted again by God. That was time that you could have used to pray for a whole lot of other things for the kingdom, which would have helped you grow your character on the prayer altar. So perhaps you may find yourself struggling to pray for long, or once you kneel to pray, you're unable to mutter out the words to talk to your loving and caring heavenly Father. No, it's no coincidence. It's a clear strategy of the enemy to limit your potential on the prayer altar. One thing again, the enemy is out to limit your authority. You know, as believers, as a Christian, you have authority in Christ. And so we are territorial commanders. So wherever you are, 
God has given you charge over that territory. So you have authority to wake up at night and pray to cancel the activities of the wicked ones. You have authority to command the kind of atmosphere you want to see in your neighborhood. You have authority to cast out, you know, forces and atmospheres of immorality or crime wave in your city, in your neighborhood, in your vicinity, because you have authority in Christ. But one thing the enemy knows is that that authority is not good for him. He may not be able to take it out from you, but he can limit it so much so that it's as though you never had that authority at all. And even more to authority is that the enemy limits your authority to influence the people around you. You may have noticed many times, perhaps, you want to correct someone, then a voice of guilt comes back to you to say, why do you want to correct them when last night you were here, or last month you were there, or last week you were there, or you to your guilty of this, and suddenly you find yourself unqualified or disqualified to make the correction or to help someone in a particular area because you feel incompetent given that you're also struggling with something. So, so that's the strategy of the enemy, you know, to kill your authority. Things which you should have spoken out against boldly with authority in order to save a soul, you suddenly finding yourself unable to speak boldly because he's holding something against you. Remember, Jesus said that the prince of this world comes and he has nothing against me. So your authority as a believer on earth is when the enemy has nothing against you to limit your influence. And in our last video, we saw the scripture that this same affliction is wrought in the many believers out there. So the temptation, of course, is wide rampant out there. But we are not bound to fall to this temptation. But perhaps this may explain why you may see that some certain messages are no longer being preached from our authors. How often do we hear messages about holiness or about purity or about integrity? Because somehow people have gradually lost their authority to speak boldly about these things because the enemy is using one or two other things similar to that to hold them on addictions, to hold them on repeated sins, to hold them on bad habits. And that is how serious this issue is. And in our last video, we saw the scripture that this same affliction is wrought in the many believers out there. So the temptation, of course, is wide rampant out there. But we are not bound to fall to this temptation. But perhaps this may explain why you may see that some certain messages are no longer being preached from our authors. How often do we hear messages about holiness or about purity or about integrity? Because somehow people have gradually lost their authority to speak boldly about these things because the enemy is using one or two other things similar to that to hold them on addictions, to hold them on repeated sins, to hold them on bad habits. And that is how serious this issue is. The enemy is out to limit your ability to become the testimony of Jesus Christ, to evangelize and to tell people about God's amazing grace because you may find yourself like, how can I go and tell this man that Jesus is going to get them out of that when perhaps secretly I'm also struggling with that, you see? So somehow it kills your testimony about Jesus. How do I go out and tell them when I myself am not perfect, by myself I'm struggling with this or that? His whole concept is to disqualify. Remember, you and I, we are sons, daughters of the Lion of the tribe of Judah. And so we are intended to roar and take influence over domains and territories. And so if the enemy can get your roar to be silenced out, then you are no different from what is not a lion. You may be the lion, but without the influence, without the authority, without the manifestation, he has nothing to worry about. So bear this in mind the next time the temptation comes. You are not weighing whether God will forgive you or not. You are not weighing whether this is pleasurable or not pleasurable. What you're actually weighing is your character. Because once he gets you out, you have to start all over again. And if he continues that way, you kind of stay on the same spot for long. And that's definitely not good. So I'd like to leave you with the scripture. Romans 8 verse 19 says, For the endless expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. Remember, waited for the manifestation 
of the sons of God. So there is so much great and amazing potential in you. And that's what the Bible talks about, heavenly treasures in earthly verses. The objective is that those treasures never come out. And so you must decide today as you watch this, that you're going to preserve your treasures and you're going to see to either by all means and by God's grace, you're going to deliver those treasures to the world because the world eagerly awaits you. And so this video, we're looking at how did we really get into all this? How did the enemy get us into all this? And of course, the first answer that you could come up with is sin nature, you know? If you have not yet had a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, if you have not yet surrendered your life, if you have not yet been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, where the new nature of the Spirit of God is written in you, then it's normal, completely normal, that you have to find yourself struggling or moving in the pattern of this repeated sin or this bad habit. So, what you really need to do at this point in time then is to see that you get your relationship with your manufacturer, your relationship with Jesus back in order. Because the Bible says any man in Christ is a new creature and so all things have passed away and behold all things have become new. But you may be telling me you are a believer, you're sure you've given your life to Christ and maybe perhaps you have revealed your relationship with Him. And you are sure that you did surrender everything because one challenge with some of us is that we come to Christ as Savior but we don't come to Him as Lord so we want Him to save us but we are not going to subject all ourselves we are not going to subject ourselves to His principles and His rules and walk by His manuscript and walk by His constitution which is the Bible so you want to check that you have completely surrendered everything because unless you are completely and totally surrendered and dead to sin and alive only in Christ, then can you be able to overcome the cycle of this repeated sin? So you want to check your salvation, your relationship with God. You want to check if you're totally surrendered. And so that's a few, so that's really two ways that the enemy uses to grab people in this. If you're not saved, it's normal. Your nature is a sin nature. And if you're not totally surrendered everything to God, then the few things, the few doors that are still open is going to take advantage of that. Now, the next thing you want to look at is triggers. What are triggers? A trigger is something that activates and gives motion to a bullet to get out or gives motion to something to start happening. So, triggers in your life are perhaps the scenarios, the things, the circumstances that put you in the mood to do exactly what you don't want to do. So once the enemy knows your triggers, the tendency is he's going to see to it as often as he can, you find yourself in these triggers. It could be the movies you're watching, it could be the songs you're listening to, it could be the places you're visiting, it could be the friends you keep, it could be the kind of conversation that you have, or just listening to some words. At the beginning of this series, I told you I will avoid calling the names of these repeated sins because actually the names in themselves, once it becomes an addiction, those names become triggers and that's why even in your sleep, once you hear them, there is kind of an alertness because perhaps it's a secret you're keeping or you know you don't want this but somehow the thing is still pursuing you. So the enemy uses that as a trigger to keep you in bondage. So it's very important that you somehow like a logbook keep an account of what triggers the bad tendencies of what gives room or sets you in the mood on court you know you're doing fine you're doing great you've moved on and you believe you've overcome and then this recipe for disaster this things just fall in place and before you know it you're down crashing again so it's important that you understand the triggers that the enemy is using against you because in the next video we're going to actually see how to reverse that the next thing how we actually find ourselves in these things is negative emotions if you've noticed many of the bad habits many of the addictions many of the bad habits many of the addictions that we turn to adopt were actually things we adopted during some emotional moment in our lives. Maybe it was anxiety or stress or depression or just some emotional weakness. And so this thing 
came as some sort of comfort. You see, the enemy presented to it to you. So why struggle? Why continue in the pain? Console yourself with this. And so it was just one time, just this one time, and then just a second time, and then from once it became twice, and twice began thrice, and now it's a problem to get rid of it completely. So you want to understand these emotions, and many of these emotions too are triggers. So you may be completely fine, and perhaps once you start feeling lonely, you know, these thoughts start coming to your mind. Why are you lonely? This can keep you company, these people can keep you company, this place can give you a solution. It's a solution because it's not actually a solution. Why is that at the end you actually feel regret and you feel worse than before you actually went there? But of course, all these are first a product of your ideas. And we're going to be seeing that in our last video where I actually have a special surprise for you. And it's a great book I'm releasing. Your ideas control your beliefs and these beliefs affect your mindset and this mindset eventually determine the kind of character you have you know once the enemy drops ideas into your mind that everyone is doing this so don't bother about getting out of it so that controls what you believe you believe everyone is in need and so there is nothing wrong with it and so you get that mindset and that character and no matter how you struggle to get out of it it will be very difficult because of that idea and that belief that you've developed. If you get the idea that you're never getting out of this, this is who you are and that's exactly going to be your belief system and your mindset and that will be your reality. So that is exactly how the enemy gets us into these things and tries to keep us in them for as long as possible. Your ideas control your beliefs and these beliefs affect your mindset. And this mindset eventually determines the kind of character you have. You know, once the enemy drops ideas into your mind that everyone is doing this, so don't bother about getting out of it. So that controls what you believe. You believe everyone is in need, and so there is nothing wrong with it. And so you get that mindset and that character. And no matter how you struggle to get out of it, it will be very difficult because of that idea and that belief that you've developed. If you get the idea that you're never getting out of this, this is who you are, and that's exactly going to be your belief system and your mindset, and that will be your reality. So that is exactly how the enemy gets us into these things and tries to keep us in them for as long as possible. So he can destroy that character and limit your potential. So it's important you understand this because in the next video, we're now going to be looking at how to get out of this cycle of repeated sin for good. So mind you, the negative focus. You keep focusing on not doing it again. But the problem is the mind doesn't know not. All the mind knows is doing whatever you say. So if you say, I'm not going to do this, all your mind understands is going to do this. There is no not in your mind and that's why focusing on the problem is not helping. Keeping it as a secret, secrecy only breaks it. It's like keeping something in the dark. What happens is that it molds and it remains and it gets worse. So bringing it in the open as we'll see in the next video is very important. And forget about the resolutions. It's the last time. It may probably not be your last time, but if you apply these principles, over time with consistency, it's certainly going to lead you for good. This is the part four, and we're looking at exactly how to get out of repeated sin. And of course, if you follow that part three, then you can already deduce from the ways and the strategies that the enemy uses to get you in, that if you invert those, then you'll be able to get out. So obviously, the first thing is your salvation, you know, and your total surrender to Christ. You have to see that you have the new nature before you start battling the old mindset. So first get rid of the old nature, and then all you'll be left to do is get rid of the old mindset. So what's your relationship with Jesus like? You want to surrender your life because that's the first guaranteed way for you to be translated from the kingdom of darkness where this nature and this habit and this sin, these addictions are normal to the new kingdom of God where you can actually have the new nature of righteousness. 
Of course, the next thing then that you want to look at is your ideas. What are the ideas that the enemy has sold to you that you believe? Do you believe you can never get out of that? Or do you believe that you can really do all things through Christ? And that includes conquering and taking full victory and dominion over this habit. What are the ideas that you have accepted? Do you think because everyone is doing it, or at least so the idea is that everyone is doing it, it's normal and accepted? Or do you believe that you can be the exception? You can be the vessel set apart that God can use you for exceeding great words. What are your ideas? Because these control your belief system and eventually control your mindset and how you react to the triggers. And so obviously, of course, our next point is the triggers. You want to see that you avoid the triggers as much as possible. Of course, first salvation, returning completely and surrendering back to God. Then next, you're looking at the ideas which are obviously spiritual and subconscious. You really don't have physical things you do here. But for the triggers, from here on, you have to take action. You have to avoid those things that stimulate you. You have to avoid those stimulants that put you in the mood to go downhill. Of course, oftentimes it's easier said than done. And believe me, I know what I'm talking about, but you cannot give up. You cannot get your hands down and say, you have gone too far to recover or you've gone too deep. No, as long as you're alive, as long as you're watching me and you're seeing this video now, there is so much exceeding great hope for you. So don't give up on yourself, hang in there, look at those triggers and see how you can avoid those patterns. And this next point is perhaps the most important in all of this series. Believe me, if you don't get anything from this series, then get this in particular. Every time you fall, pick yourself up and run back to God. Pick yourself up and run back to Jesus. Don't run away from Him. His hands are always open to receive you. It doesn't matter what you've done or how far or how deep or how dirty you think you are. But believe me, Jesus loves you unconditionally. If you don't remember anything, remember that Jesus loves you unconditionally. So go back to Him in prayers. Even if you don't have anything to say, just go back in His presence. And whatever comes to mind, just tell Him how you feel. Tell Him your struggles. Tell him your battles, tell him how much you love him and how much you love to please him and how difficult you are finding it. You see, God is not some tax master standing waiting for you to fall again so he can whip you. No, he's a loving and a caring father. So I encourage you, you can even do that right now. You can start praying, you can start talking to him, you can start returning to him right now that he will heal your heart, he will take the broken pieces of your character and mend them back together so that you can become whole again. So please don't give up on yourself, don't look down on yourself, there is nothing bad or nothing worse or nothing different about you. Remember, Christ died for us even while we were yet sinners. So there is really nothing you can do right now that will make him look down on you. But he has put righteousness in you. But he has put holiness in you and his objective is that you can manifest that new nature of righteousness and holiness that is in you. So remember, we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You are not trying to be righteous. Jesus' sacrifice has already made you righteous. So your objective now is to see that you can meditate on this scripture. Let it become your reality because once you change the ideas, once you change the belief system, the next time these triggers come, the next time this temptation comes, what reigns in your mind is this is not me. I am the righteousness of God and that righteousness doesn't do this kind of things. And so you see yourself overcoming this thing for good. So God's grace is available, not so that you can keep falling and rising and falling and rising. No, His grace is available that when you fall, you may rise never to fall again. So don't settle in the mud. Don't feel it's too difficult. You have tried so much, you're not going to try again. That's exactly where the enemy wants to get you to. So refuse to get right into his trap. Rise up and remember that the righteous may fall seven times, but yet he rises the eighth time. You're a fighter, you're a warrior, you're a conqueror, you're an overcomer. That's who you are. You must repeat that to yourself every single day, every single time, and take charge of your authority as you break your way through this barrier that is placed before you. And remember, 
There are no real changes until you start changing your habits, until you start changing the patterns. The places you used to go to, you must discipline yourself to replace those places with new places. That's how you change your habits. The books you used to read, the movies you used to watch, the kind of things you used to listen to, you must start replacing those things with new things. The idle time you used to have that causes your thoughts to start wandering in the wrong direction. You must fill in that idle time with something resourceful, something productive, something spiritual so that you stay on course. And lastly, the most important, you must be committed to be consistent. You must be committed to be consistent. You may follow all the other steps, but it's this step of consistency that guarantees that you will go all the way and long enough you will be out for good. Without consistency, we'll go back to the same path. So make a commitment to be consistent. Don't say just this once, let me look. Don't say just this once, let me pay attention. Just say just this once, let me try. Don't say I'm feeling like so and so, I just want to. No, be consistent because once you compromise once, you're opening a door for compromising always. And I'd like to leave you with this scripture and I want you to meditate on it even after you stop this video. Romans 6 verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. For sin shall no more have. For sin shall not have dominion over you. Other versions and translations say, sin shall no longer have dominion over you. Meaning the sin used to have dominion over you, but now you are no longer under the law, but you're under grace. Meditate on this scripture, read it over and over again. Let it sink into your subconscious. Sin shall no longer have dominion over you. So perhaps it used to have, but because you're a changed person now, because you're rooted and buried in Christ, it shall no longer have dominion over you. So this is your new reality. Not that you are flesh and we are all humans and these things are natural. No, don't confess that as your reality. Your reality is these things shall no longer have dominion over you. And I trust as you apply this and you continue in prayer, your victory is sealed and settled. A big congratulations to you because I can already see you re-exercising back your full character, your full authority, your full potentials in all these areas that we saw in the previous video for the kingdom. And so in this last video, I'm going to give you the secret that guarantees your consistency. You see, it's not enough to quit it, but the only proof that you have quit it for good is that you are consistent in need for life. The key, the key thing that makes consistency possible is systems. You need strong systems to guarantee your consistency. You see, you must understand that like we saw in the past videos, the enemy has a very sophisticated network and system to see that by all means in every sphere and corner is able to influence or trigger you down the hill you don't want to go. And so it's important that to protect yourself and to protect the victory that you've achieved so far is that you build similar systems that are going to guarantee your consistency. Say for example, if it's something that has to do with the internet, you can install barriers on all your devices that will serve like a block wall to protect you or even in the least delay you when you feel tempted or triggered. Remember, it's been proven that once we delay decisions as long as possible, we are able to actually make clearer decisions or think clearly. So you want to make sure that there are a lot of barriers to protect you from just jumping in the heat of the moment or in the heat of the trigger of the temptation. There should be a whole sophisticated procedure that you make it so complex for you to air that just along the way you actually even probably get discouraged or get tired and you start rethinking that perhaps this is indeed not worthy and you're valuing your character and your potentials more. Another part of a system is having a support group or a support person that you can be accountable to. Remember we saw in the last video that secrecy is a serious breeding ground for bad habits, a serious breeding ground for addictions and repeated sins. So once no one knows it, the tendency is 
the tendency is well if I do it again no one will ever know but when sometimes you know that I may have to give an account to this person they will ask me again and if if I say it was bad I don't want to give them a bad report so because I'm accountable to someone I want to keep myself together you could have a support system a support group a support person where you say you arrange with the person that wants the triggers are there you may run to them for help they may come to your rescue they may come to your support or remind you of the scriptures and other scriptures like the ones we have seen in this video series so far because the tendency is the enemy uses the divide and conquer rule. He wants to separate you from God. He wants to separate you from the memory of the scripture, separate you from the memory of the value of your potential and your purpose. And all what he paints in front of you to blind your eyes with is the pleasure that you are going to get. And so at that moment, you're not seeing the full picture, you're not thinking straight. So having a support system, a support person that's going to have a global perspective to remind you that, hey, this is what you're not seeing, this is what you're not seeing, these are the consequences and all of that. It's not really about whether God will forgive you or not. You're no longer at that level. It's about your greatness. It's about your purpose. It's about your potential. And that's why it's important that you apply this secret in order to remain consistent on this journey is a pleasure that you're going to get and so at that moment you're not seeing the full picture you're not thinking straight so having a support system a support person that's going to have a global perspective to remind you that hey this is what you're not seeing this is what you're not seeing these are the consequences and all of that it's not really about whether god will forgive you or not you're no longer at that level it's about your greatness it's about your purpose it's about your potential and that's why it's important that you apply this secret in order to remain consistent on this journey. Remember, you have to change your ideas. You have to replace the old ideas with what scripture says about you. Don't meditate and preach your experiences to yourself. Don't meditate and preach your family history or family background to yourself. This happened to this person, this happened to that person. It's in the family line. No, 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 no. That's not your reality. If you're in Christ, you're under a new blood lineage. So you want to change your ideas so that you can change your beliefs. And once your belief starts getting changed, over time your mindset and the way you think changes suddenly you realize that you have no interest at all for these things again and i get to a point where once you start becoming truly free the triggers lose your power over you they mean nothing to you because indeed then you are truly dead to sin so talking about changing your ideas, your beliefs, and your mindset so you can affect your character and keep it consistent, then there is a whole chapter in my new book that I address this inside. And the title of the book is To Be or To Do, The Secret to True, Lasting, Authentic, and Fulfilling Success in a World of Faith and Mediocrity. And so this book, I'm releasing it just now. and. You can take advantage there is a whole chapter in there and in this book I try to capture secrets and principles that are intended to help you break patterns that keep you in mediocrity remember the objective of the enemy is to destroy your character and limit your potential and once your potentials are limited what is the end result mediocrity so you're getting what looks like result but it's far less than what your full potential could achieve and that's why you definitely want to grab your copy of this book so what are you waiting for rush now and grab your copy of to be or to do so i believe that brings us to the end of our series i want to believe and hope that you have learned something great from this series and you have really been inspired it has touched your life and i pray my prayer for you is that applying these principles and reviewing them over and over on a daily basis is going to help you really achieve true freedom remember don't compromise, don't get lazy, don't get likes. Like we saw the example of repeated sins in the first video, it may go for months or weeks and then you think it's over. That's when the enemy wants you to let down your guard. And then once you let down your guard, the triggers come flooding in. So bind you, you're a soldier in a war front. So stay alert because your enemy, the devil, is like a roaring lion roaming around looking for who to devour. So make sure you're always on guard 
you're always on duty, you're always in charge, and then you give no place to the devil. Before I go on, I want to say a big thank you to all our Patreons. Thank you so much for your monthly support that really helps us produce the videos we produce. If you'd like to support this channel, if you'd like to become our Patreon, please check the link to our Patreon page in the video description below. I am Buddha's Jumesi from Wisdom for Dominion, where we give you kingdom principles for effective living. That has been our time and the end of our wonderful series, How to Overcome Repeated I am Buddha's Jumesi from Wisdom for Dominion, where we give you kingdom principles for effective living. That has been our time and the end of our wonderful series, How to Overcome Repeated Sin. So thank you so much for watching. Remember, you are an overcomer. Remember, you are loved unconditionally. And remember, all these things shall no longer have dominion over you. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in you. Bye.